How's it going YouTube? My name is Christian with Plan Your Federal Retirement, back with another video with our All About FERS segment. Today I wanted to make a video having to do with health insurance and keeping your health insurance in retirement when you do a postponed retirement and some things to consider while we're postponing our retirement. Um, but first, before I talk about a postponed retirement, I wanted to just talk about the normal rules in order to retire under FERS without any penalties, without any reductions. These would just be considered the normal immediate rules under FERS. You guys are probably familiar with them, but I'll write them down anyway. Minimum retirement age and 30 years of creditable service, that's the first option. Age 60 with 20 years of creditable service. And the last one is age 62 with five years of credible service. Again, normal, immediate rules for under the FERS system. So when it comes to looking at these and saying, hey, maybe this just doesn't work with my plans, maybe I don't really wanna work this long, or maybe I just don't have the, the years ready to do that, there is another option. And this would be our minimum retirement age, retiring with our minimum retirement age with at least 10 years of credible service. We call that our an MRA plus 10 retirement. And at this point, we have a couple of options when we have a MRA with 10 years of service. We can choose to turn on our pension um, at our minimum retirement age, but it comes with a permanent penalty. And that permanent penalty is for every year you start your pension earlier than 62, there is a 5% per year permanent penalty. I wanna emphasize that. So let's say you started your pension at six or 57, that's five years younger than 62, five years times 5%, that's a 25% per year permanent penalty for turning on your pension with an MRA plus 10 retirement. Not ideal. So what's pretty cool is you have the option to postpone your retirement when you have met your MRA with at least 10 years of service. And when you postpone your retirement, we're we're temporarily putting our benefits on a shelf. We're waiting until we've met the thresholds um, having to do with age and with years of service. Then we can turn on our benefits. So let's just say we had you know, uh, 21 years of service. Well, if we go out at MRA with our 10 years of service, we would wait until we were 60 because we had at least 20 years of service. We had 21 years. We'd be able to turn it on at 60. If we don't have, if we have less than 20 years, then we have to wait until 62 when we'll have five years. So what happens here is we have to put our benefits on a shelf. We have to pause taking out the pension, but we're also pausing to start our health insurance. We're not gonna have health insurance during this time. There's two rules in order for you to keep your health insurance into retirement. Um, the first rule is you have to be eligible for an immediate retirement under FERS. All four of these options are eligible for an immediate retirement under FERS. We can, we can choose to turn on our pension here with an MRI 10. It's just that it's gonna come with a penalty. So we're choosing to, to delay it, but again, we're eligible for an immediate retirement. That's the first rule. The second rule is we have to be in FEHB for the last five years prior to separating from service. So that's what I want you guys to keep in mind here for a second. The issue is, again, when we come to a postponed retirement is health insurance. And how are we going to have health insurance during this time? So the first place that I would look if we're in this situation, the first place I would look is to see, does our spouse have health insurance? If our spouse has health insurance and we can consider hopping on their employer's plan. Um, life's gonna be great. Now we're covered, we have health insurance between whenever age we decide to retire and whenever age we decide to turn on our pension. Could be a year, could be three years, could be five years, right? We just need to make sure our spouse is gonna continue to work during that time frame, and that will be covered. And if you, if you do have a spouse and they have coverage there, great, makes sense. But we have to keep in mind that rule that I mentioned, rule number two, in order to keep your health insurance, is you have to be in FEHB for the last five years separating from service. So what that means is, is don't go on your spouse's health insurance plan you know, 
six months or a year before you separate from service because then we would be breaking that rule. Keep your FEHB all the way up until you end up separating from service and then hop on your spouse's plan or maybe have double coverage there for a little bit. But don't cancel your FEHB, wait a few months and then go on your spouse's plan. Uh, we don't want that, of course. So option number two would be to do TCC, temporary continuation of coverage. This is often referred to as like COBRA coverage outside of the FEHB space. And what this says is we get to keep our health insurance for 18 months. Usually there's some other exceptions to that where it could be a little bit longer than 18 months. However, it comes with a pretty hefty cost. Um, it's 102% of the premiums. So what that means is if you're used to paying, you know, 400 bucks, 500 bucks a month for your FEHB coverage, again, that's a month. You're probably used to paying it on every two week basis, but on a month, 400 to $500 is typical for a family plan. That's your share of the coverage. As you know, the government is also contributing into the plan as well, and they contribute roughly 72% of the premiums. Well, under TCC, this says that we would be able to responsible for 102% of the premium. So no longer is the government gonna subsidize our premiums. So our 400 or $500 a month payment could very well be $1,500 plus uh, a month, uh, which could be quite expensive. But it is an option, something to look into. I'd say another option and, and probably our, our last option here would either be to look at the state or the federal marketplace, sometimes called the exchange as well. So depending on what state you're in, there might be a state sponsored plan, um, but there's also a federal marketplace as well. So again, just look into what's gonna make the most sense. What's nice about this is depending on the income that you're going to have in the, the, during these years that you're postponing your retirement, um, we might have a, a little bit of a subsidy or what is referred to as a premium credit for doing so. And in fact, between 2021 and 2025, that premium tax credit that is normally uh, phased out is no longer phased out. So what that says is if you make over 400% of the poverty limit, federal poverty limit, um, normally that tax credit goes away. During these years, 2021 to 2025, that tax credit doesn't go away. So it's kind of nice. So one of those things, again, is just looking at the health insurance, probably before you retire to see and estimate what are these costs going to be while you are um, still working and still employed just so that you can map out what they will be and they have some nice calculators there that you can type in how much income you're expected to receive and what your premium credit will be and ultimately what your out-of-pocket costs would be and one other option bonus option here is if you choose to work after you are doing after you separate from service and are postponing your retirement just that future employer's health insurance plan, right? Not gonna apply to everybody here, but if you choose to work, they have a health insurance plan, might be something to consider whether you choose to work for one company versus another um, so that you'll have health insurance. Again, something that I wanted to make a video on today, just that I think can often get overlooked is how are we gonna have health insurance during this time we're considering doing a postponed retirement? Maybe this changes your mind about when to do a postponed retirement because of this health insurance plan. Or maybe it doesn't, maybe you do wanna separate from service, retire, and uh, we just need to have that plan. So anyway, Again, my name is Christian with Planner Federal Retirement. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, let us know if you have questions below in the comment section. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel. And uh, until next time, happy planning.